John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Serious testing, successful hunting. Man, I'm excited about the broadhead I'm testing today. It's the new Beast Broadhead by Bomar. Josh Bomar just came out with it, just released it. They had the first release just several days ago, and it sold out like in seconds or minutes or something like that. But they're keeping uh, getting more in. They're getting more inventory in each week. Um, but super eager to put this to the test. Okay, it's called the Beast. I think it's, it's an acronym, and it stands for Bone Evading Advanced spring technology okay so there's a lot of cool features about this broadhead let's zoom on in here and I'll go through some of those design features and specifications and then we'll put it to the test I'm using my protocol for 2023 and for a detailed description of that please check out the video it's just called 2023 broadhead test process I put it out earlier this year and it explains all the different tests that I do and why I do them and so forth and you can also look in the description right below each of the videos that I put out and see how the uh, the head scored in each of the tests that I put it through and you get all the details about it. That's where I also um, put the, the overall score and I put the price of every broadhead and I also have a bunch of discount codes for some of the broadheads that so, so that you can, uh, you can find there and save some money. So just read through that description right below the video and I'm going to be using my Bowtech CP28 set at 72 pounds, 27 inch draw. I'm using a Bishop FOC King Arrows for most of the shooting, but then I'm using the Bishop Fat Eliminators for the really hard impact stuff. All right, let's zoom on in here and check out this beast broadhead. Okay, here's a good look at the beast. And man, this is a beast of a broadhead. There is so much going on here. I'm gonna to try to get it all in. First of all, you see it here in the closed position, two blade broadhead. This is a two inch cutting diameter. In the closed position, it closes to 0.64 inches. So very streamlined in flight, I assume. I imagine it's gonna fly extremely well, but we'll have to test that. Um, you can see the ferrule here uh, also is uh, starts really narrow with a tip for penetration and then gets larger. That's going to help in, uh, in, in aerodynamics and flight forgiveness as well as penetration. You also notice the multiple grooves in the ferrule as well as the tip and that's just going to aid in flight forgiveness as well. As it rotates around it traps air in there and makes it uh, a bit more forgiving as well as it's going to help with durability. Okay, so the way it works is the tip penetrates and man, that is a needle point tip there tip there. I thought I cut myself. Okay, it is really sharp. And uh, as as these two little wings, boom, and they're not sharpened. As they impact the hide, then what happens is the blades release a, or a spring is released and then these blades spring open and they spring open at 750 miles per hour, okay? Uh, on the package it says 650, but they since added this extra little thing inside that it actually, they spring forward at 750 miles an hour. That, that's actually breaking the, the, the sound barrier, okay? That's how fast these blades are deploying. Plus, if you're shooting it at 250, 300 feet per second, you know, it's it's all the faster. So this this takes, say they, they say it takes 1.3 pounds of force, and then boom, these deploy with 15 pounds of force at 750 miles an hour. And so they're they're not losing the energy with, with that penetration. They're actually gaining some, if you will, with that stored energy, allowing those blades to cut through the hide in an even faster way than they would have if they didn't have that spring inside there. And the spring, interestingly enough, they wanted to get a spring that could, that could stay closed like this for a long time and then still work. And so they looked all over the world and they found these, uh, these springs in the auto industry. And the springs were made by a company uh, that that makes them for Lamborghini and, and for Ferrari, I think, stuff like that. And so this super high-tech spring, and the spring that they have in there, it has these, these 15 pounds of stored energy, but it can stay in the closed position, like the contracted position, 
and still retain like 95% of its energy after I think it's either three or five years. So there's never been a, a spring used like this in a broadhead application. It's not just your normal little spring. Okay, and the blades are 0.035 inches thick. They have a nice curve to them that you're gonna see when I open it up here. But that curve is just gonna aid in penetration and cut as well. Let me show it to you in the open position so I don't cut myself. Okay, so here they are in the open position. And I will note that each pack comes with these two little finger gloves so you can grab the blades. And that's what you need to do when you want to close them again. You just grab them and pinch them down. And it really works. You don't want to lose these things, okay? Don't be trying to do it just with your hands by gripping it like that. These blades are extremely sharp. I'm going to do an official test here in a bit, but man, they, they seem really sharp. So I've been using these little finger gloves and I'm glad to have them. But you can see the curve to the blades like that. Now the spring, once it's deployed, again, it pushes these blades into the open position. It's not barbed because these blades can fold back like that, okay? Uh, beyond just their barbed stage but I will say they're difficult to get out of a target I shot them into a target and though they do bend back they don't bend back so much that they're super easy to get out of a target so I wouldn't be shooting them into targets too often but here the the, the springs serve a secondary purpose after being open like that if uh, if bone is encountered I'm going to use my little finger glove right here then the blades can compress back and that allows them to stay straight as they continue to penetrate and not lose their edge and not lose the energy. They just can go right around that blade and then they spring back into place after a quarter of an inch is what they say. So that extra tension, let me put on the other thing here, that extra tension right there can go right between uh, or around blades like that and then spring back to their full open position. Now some other additional things about it is they're coming out with uh, with larger blade models and they're going to be uh, sharing about that in the in the days ahead as well as they're going to be making some interchangeable tips like different size tips in there and uh, different weights for the broadhead. Now this is the 100 grain and so it uses an aluminum ferrule, a 7075 aluminum ferrule which is a really good aluminum. I always say if you're going to use aluminum that's a good one to use. It's stronger than, than some steels but perhaps in heavier models that come out in the future they'll use all steel there I'm not sure about that but I'm eager to see the more iterations that they come out with in the days ahead and man eager to dive in and put this beast to the test It only took 125 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 10 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated seven and three quarter inches. And here's the entrance hole. It opened uh, an inch and a half on this medium. And it's not uncommon for heads to not fully open on this medium. So I'll do a more formal uh, opening test in a minute. Wow, it took no additional force to cut through the wire, which is a 10 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 52 layers. The entrance hole was one and three quarter inches. And by the back of the box, it had opened up to almost two and a half inches. Okay, just for fun, let's see how well it opens on an apple. It's in great shape after three shots through the MDF. The only signs of wear are right close to the ferrule where you can see the blades kicked forward into uh, the tip and made a little bit of a divot in the blade there. 
It held up very well through the two shots in the steel plate. You can see it got a little bit of edge chatter in the edges of the blades, and the tip got a little bit rolled over. And then you can see the holes. They're a little smaller than the cutting diameter, and that's just because of that spring mechanism. They can't open fully when going through a steel plate, which is understandable. So here it is after impacting the concrete, and as you can see, it broke right there in the ferrule. I managed to find one of the blades that had flown uh, quite a ways across the yard, uh, but the tip embedded really deeply into the concrete, which was pretty cool to see. There's no getting that thing out. And you know, I, as I say all the time, the, uh, the concrete test is not like a pass-fail. It's not like, oh, this broadhead failed because it didn't hold up to the concrete. That only accounts for 3% of the overall score. Uh, as for the durability of this, man, it held up uh, very well through the MDF and the, the steel plate as well. So what do you think of the beast? Man, a lot to love about this broadhead, right? Love the, the low profile in flight, super secure uh, retention system, the blades in the closed position like this, no O-rings, no clips, and uh, love that spring action that they have in there. I get the feeling that that's gonna be a lot more effective on animals then my testing really allows. You know, there's only so much you can you can do with standardized tests, but it, it did well in my testing, but I think it's gonna do even better on animals, the way the spring uh, causes those blades to just pop forward with such force. Love the, uh, the Lutz blades and the sharpness. Oh my gosh, and the edge retention. That's the, the sharpest and the best edge retention of anything I've tested. I've tested others that were like 125, but then it was 125 grams of force after going through penetration test one. That's super rare, I've never seen that before. So again, just a lot to like about this broadhead. I look forward to seeing the future models that they come, up out, come out with in the future, but Josh Bomar, you're on to something really good here. Appreciate all your hard work and ingenuity in designing this head, and again, I look forward to testing more of your models in the future. And stay tuned for the, uh, the total score as well as the corresponding LUS grade. <laughs>